At an altitude of over 3,800 meters, Lake Titicaca is in the heart of the Andes, which stretch the length of the South American continent. It sits on the border of Bolivia and Peru. 200 kilometers long, the lake is also the birthplace of Andean Indian mythology. The Uros used to live on the shores of the lake, but as the Inca Empire started to expand in the 14th century, they retreated to the middle of the lake to escape the fighting and slavery. They adapted to the conditions on the lake very well, thanks to the remarkable use they made of this aquatic plant, the totora. By being entirely self-sufficient, the Uros prospered and created a real civilization in the reeds, based on hunting and fishing. The fish that we catch, and that our ancestors always caught, is the carash. We can do everything with this fish, eat and barter. Felix lives on the floating islands of Lake Titicaca. The lake has provided for almost all his needs since he was born. If we want some fruit, we put out a chulo and eat it. This white part from here to here. It's edible. The Uras live in a community. Their daily life is based on mutual help, bartering, and clever use of the lake's riches, of which the main one is without doubt the totora. Although it can be eaten, the reed is mainly used in construction. With totora reeds and knowledge passed down from their ancestors, the Uras build everything they need, starting with boats. To make a boat, which we call a balsa here, the totora must be gathered and cut in the fields where the totora reeds are very tough. We cut them and leave them to dry for a week. Then, when they're very dry and yellow, we can start building the balsa. The Uros build boats of up to 15 meters long, which are able to carry 20 people. It takes hours of hard work to build a balsa, and it's always done in the traditional way. Although nylon ropes have replaced plaited totora reeds. In a few days, a wedding will take place on the island and it's traditional for the community to give the groom a balsa so that he can get around, fish and hunt. The couple will be given a house as well as the balsa. The problem is that on Lake Titicaca, there's no land to build on. But it doesn't matter. The community will find some. The Totoro reeds grow in a special way. After a few years, the roots come back up to the surface. All you need to do is cut off a section of this one meter thick floating carpet to have a plot. It's exhausting work that can take several days. Then the little island is pushed by motorboats to the place where the bridegroom has decided to settle. The wedding will be soon, and this has always been our tradition. When a young man and a young woman marry, we have to bring over a new island because the other islands are already occupied by families. We bring an island this size for them to live on. This island will be like a piece of ground that they can walk on. Once in place, the island is firmly anchored to stakes, so it isn't carried away by the current. With the help of the women and children, the work gets done faster. Here on the island, everyone has to help. The families, a neighbor, an uncle. We have to help each other. Normally, lots of people come. 
It's a law of the community. Although the Uras children learn how to build in the traditional way from their parents, they also go to school. Before going into lessons, they have fun sliding on the Totora floor. The small floating school was donated by a mission established on Lake Titicaca in 1960. Today, as there are no more subsidies, the parents manage to pay a teacher who is native to the islands. The primary school, built on one of the islands, teaches Aymara, the local language, and Spanish. But many children finish their education after primary school. The daily life of the Uros is also linked to a plant other than the Totora, the coca plant. Felix and Ruben use it every day. The coca plant is typical of the high plateau of the Andes. It's a sacred plant with medicinal virtues. You chew the coca for an hour, an hour and a half. Then when it's well chewed, you spit it out and have some more. It's a tradition. We've chewed it since our ancestors' time. The coca leaves also attract the good graces of Pachamama, Mother Earth. It's a pact that we make with Pachamama, and we pay the price with coca. We throw it in the water. She receives it and allows us to go. We respect that every time. We ask the lake for permission. For me, it's a sacred thing. The only way to get meat to eat on the lake is to go hunting. Felix's gun isn't exactly brand new, but he knows how to use it. Twenty-four species of birds live on Lake Titicaca, but the Uras only hunt five of them. The Uras on Lake Titicaca also improve their daily diet by collecting the eggs of birds that nest in the Totora. When we collect eggs, we prefer to check if there's a baby duck inside or not. To find out, we do this. If the egg sinks, there's nothing in it, no duckling inside. And if it floats, it's full. Nothing in it, it doesn't float. I'm happy with my life here. It's peaceful, no one bothers me. I live with the fish and the Totora. If I want a duck, I can go hunting. I'm happy. I don't want to go and live anywhere else. <laughs> the island for the newlyweds is ready. Now a house must be built for them. Wood bought in the town with the community's money will form the frame. The small house will then be covered with Totora. We don't know how to build houses with two stories. The custom of our ancestors has always been to build small houses like this. Lunch allows everyone to take a breather. Lake Titicaca lies at 3,820 meters. At this altitude, the lack of oxygen makes each movement harder. The Uras are blessed with a strong constitution to cope with this harsh life. The time has come to cover the flimsy wooden structure with Totoro reeds. The roof, made in two sections, is symbolic. It represents the joining of the newlyweds to each other. The two sections represent a man and a woman. They're joined and will never be separated. Only death can separate them.
the couple will spend one month here in privacy. The house is now finished. All that's missing is the happy couple. It's the big day. On board decorated balsas, the newlyweds dance during the crossing to the islands. At an event like this, everyone shares the happiness of belonging to the community. The party will last all day. And while the guests feast, the newlyweds slip away to discover their new reed house. What happens next depends on them. In the middle of Lake Titicaca, the Uros have managed to preserve the traditional way of life passed down from their ancestors. It's an unusual world governed by the omnipotence of nature.